Hey everybody, yesterday I was speaking about um, the way to spot your opportunities, especially in 2020. I um, was talking about how sometimes the things that have been the hardest seasons in our lives or the hardest um, times that we've walked through are really our opportunities, but they go overlooked a lot of the time. And so by exploring um, you know those um, crises in, t in more in depth, you can often find opportunities that can not only um, lead to your calling or some sort of prosperity in your life, but can also serve and benefit other people. And today I want to kind of just expand upon that a little bit more. You know, your crises should lead you to your Kairos season. Um, for example, in Second Kings, we read about how a woman was a widow. Her husband had um, passed away and she was um, uh, the mom of two sons and the bill collectors were going to come and basically take her sons as payment for the bills that she owed. And um, Elisha comes to her and tells her to go get a bunch of, well, first he asked her, like, what's in your house? And she says, there's nothing here. Like, I have a little bit of oil and that's it. And he says, go get all of the vessels that you can find. And we all know this story. As the vessels started coming, she started pouring the oil into all of the vessels. And once they were all filled, the oil stopped flowing. That woman's um, crisis led her to this Kairos appointment with this prophet who was able to um, demonstrate, you know, in the natural realm, the goodness of God and the fact that there was a plan for the way that she was, um, for the, all the paths that she had walked through. And even now moving forward, that there was still a plan for her life, for her son's lives. And what she needed to do was to not overlook what she had in her house. And that is still the same truth for all of us today. A lot of times it's easy for us to overlook the trials that we're going through or the hard times and we want to just forget about them. We just want to move on from them. But by actually developing them, by actually looking deeper into those things, we're going to find out that there's a lot of blessings for us to be had, not only for our own selves and for our family lineage, but also for those people that we're going to get connected to even in the future. This is meant to serve other people because we're so interconnected. All of us are connected. And so um, it is going to be difficult to succeed, especially moving forward, because there has been um, a lot of things that have been kind of buried under the rug or made to... Um, you know, pretend that they don't exist there. And that's not going to be the case anymore. I know that in 2020 and moving forward, things are going to be continuously exposed and at a greater measure than what we've seen before. And by partnering, by, you know, allowing your truth to not only be real to you, but to be spoken out and shared with other people, you're not only going to bless your own self and turn your crisis into a Kairos moment for God to move on your behalf, for your um, recompense to come forward, but you're going to be able to lead other people into experiencing that for themselves as well. And again, it's going to be difficult to succeed at anything that we won't recognize. I made a post um, on my Facebook and Instagram today, if you haven't seen it already, talking about this. What you don't confront, you will never conquer. And until you're willing to say, this is something that I've dealt with in my life and I need to um, you know, address it head on, it's going to continue to exist. That mountain is just going to keep following you around until you conquer it. And I have a YouTube video that's coming out, I think next week, um, maybe the week after, I can't remember, but that talks more about that in depth. Um, but really learning to embrace your, um, your crises, you know, the things that have put you into a situation where you are feeling like you're just at the mercy of God, you know, that there's not really much more that you can do, but you dig into that and you explore why this thing failed or why you're in that situation, your weaknesses, these tough times, um, they will help you develop n not only your own self again, but all of the skills that you need in the spirit realm in order to conquer that thing and to lead other people through that situation as well. In this upcoming course that I have on life after nar narcissism, again, I only run it one time a year, the live version of it, um, 
it's literally an outline for how to do this. So I can give you the outline, I can give you all of the tools that you would need to overcome your own mountain, but until you're learning to really uh, accept and make these things part of your own, like you can apply your own failures, your own shortcomings, your own crises, situations into that outline, and until you can embrace them, you're going to continue to struggle with the same things. And unfortunately, I see this happening where the, the parents do it, and so the kids do it as well. It becomes generational. And um, applying your own shortcomings, learning how to embrace these situations is what is going to open you up to your Kairos moment, to that appointed time when your breakthrough comes. And in fact, that you live from that uh, momentum, you live from that level moving forward. You don't go backwards. You, that is a breakthrough that you have conquered and you don't face that situation again. And it, you can break stuff generationally by doing this. You can break things off um, so that your children never have to face that again. You know, But it's not until you apply your own shortcomings to the outline that's given to you, You know, the spiritual principles that you know that you can apply to your life every day, but it's not until you actually um, embrace those things and make them part of your spiritual history, your... Um, your obedience in the natural that that stuff is actually going to be manifested that you'll see the um, fruits of all of that coming together and so i really want to um encourage you to really take a t take time you know before we enter into the new year the new decade and look at where the biggest shortcomings where the biggest um failures or the biggest hurts that you experienced in this past decade were because that is where you're going to find your biggest area for blessing. And by learning how to apply those things, even if it's painful for you to sit and remember those things, by looking at them and learning how to truly get all of that, the knowledge, the um, authority that you have gained in the spirit realm from those things, when you learn how to do that and apply it successfully, you're not only building a, a strong life for you but you aren't robbing other people see there are people around us that we're connected to who are not walking out their calling they're not in their purpose and it's because things were so painful that they didn't w feel like there was any point in sitting with those feelings and kind of going over what happened and trying to pursue a way to make that stuff better and so they just kind of forgot about it they'd rather push it to the side until that stuff starts building and building and building, right? And now their children are walking in it. You can rob other people by not walking in your purpose, by not following your calling and dealing with these things. We often look at the hard times in our lives as just something that we need to hurry up and get through or just like grin and bear it until it's done. And we rob ourselves out of not just the experience, as I said, but the spiritual authority to eliminate those things forever from our generation, from our generational lines, and to help other people do the same thing in those circumstances that they're facing. And so I really want to just encourage you, like, no matter what you're going through or what you have gone through or what you faced, really see how you can apply that moving forward into the new decade because there's going to be so many blessings not just for you but for all of these people that you're going to be connected to and that's ultimately how kingdom is brought to earth that's how the kingdom of god fills the earth how his glory is made manifest in all of nature all of creation so um if you are uh two announcements really quick if you are uh interested in signing up for my course do it this weekend because it's 50 dollars off and that sale ends at 11.59 on Sunday evening. Um, and I won't be running it again. It starts February 3rd. And um, second of all, I have a free Facebook group. It's just a private group that I've created since I've gotten so many uh, different comments and different issues that people are facing through my YouTube channel. I thought I'd make a space where people can come together and kind of make community, but also give advice or share encouraging words with one another um uh just making a community a supportive space for people to heal so um i think i posted it on my facebook page but if not i will put the link 
in the comments or the description of this video so that you can uh, join if you if you want to. Um, it's up right now, but I'll be posting more after the new year in that group. So again, I hope this word has blessed you because I just uh, I feel so strongly that this is something that, first of all, the church needs to be setting, the capital C church needs to be setting an example to the world on how to appropriately, appropriately deal with crises, with disappointments, with um, just negative things that can happen in our lives that we all will face, but and how to uh, turn those things into something amazing. You know, there's not one single situation that isn't meant to lead us into a greater experience of Jesus. You know, even with both of actually the feedings of the, the um, thousands of people, the disciples' uh, natural response was send them away. Like they need to go find food and they need to get out of here. And Jesus said, you, you give them something to eat. You know, you feed them. So that situation where these people were with Jesus for three days, they didn't have anything to eat. And he said that they would faint on their way home. They didn't have enough strength to even make it home. Um, it wasn't until he said, give me whatever you have here, that they found out that there was some fishes and bread. And so it's in the places that where you think that there are no options, <laughs> that, that there's so many options, but we're so used to, the world has programmed us to just hurry up and get out of it, that we miss the opportunity for the miracle. We miss the opportunity for our spiritual growth, for our faith to build you know, to see this other revelation of who Jesus is to us personally. You know, I can't give to you something that I've never experienced. I can't give to you something that I don't have. And the same is true for you to me. And so we need to be continuously growing in these experiences. And it often requires us to face our fears, to face the thing that has even beaten us down for so long that we feel like we'll never overcome it. That thing is meant to for us to dominate it. It's meant for us to take dominion over it, but we have to put forth the effort. And um, in February, I have a, a video coming out on my YouTube channel that talks about like the complacency that our society has gotten into and how mediocrity has just become the norm so that we don't, it's really taken away from our God-given imagination, that the way that we are supposed to view things, the way that we are supposed to see things and be able to create the foundation, the capacity to be filled has been limited because of the acceptance, the large acceptance of mediocrity, and it's not okay. So um, the first thing that you can do is to increase your capacity to receive from the kingdom by facing the things that are uh, uh, limiting you or have hindered you or have even defeated you, it seems like, in the past. Again, with that um, description that I used, from Second Kings earlier in this video, the oil stopped flowing when all when there was no more vessels. You determine the capacity. That's the ultimate lesson from that. Is that you know if she would have had ten times more vessels, they all would have been filled up. Um, and so, you determine the capacity that you have to receive from the kingdom by by how well you deal with the spiritual um, situation in the soil of your heart. So if you have hard soil there, obviously stuff isn't going to grow. Again, thorny soil or uh, shallow soil, you know, we already know that stuff isn't going to grow there. So you have to take care of the, the soil of your heart. And those, there are stones in our hearts where the places that we didn't um, take care of those things that have made us bitter, that made us sad, that made us um, doubt, you know, all of those things get piled up in there and we have to deal with it so that we have the capacity to receive when it is our Kairos moment. The process that it takes from moving us from our crisis to our Kairos moment is a very important and it really all revolves around the condition of the soil of our hearts. Making sure that our soil is good soil, it's a great place for the word of the Lord to land and it can grow from it. Um, a lot of people think like if I just had a word from the Lord, you know, this would this situation would go away or, you know, then I would be able to hold on a little longer. But the truth is, it's not the word. <laughs> the word is getting sown no matter what. You'll see in all four of those soils in that parable, they all got seed. 
So the word is being sown all of the time. It has to do with our ability to receive the capacity in our spirit to receive the promises of the kingdom. And a lot of times the reason that we cannot receive is because we haven't dealt with these things that were crises in our lives in an appropriate manner. We're afraid of that thing. We have damage left from that situation that we faced in the past and we haven't uh, gotten closure there. We haven't allowed the Lord to till that soil and to make our hearts soft. And so we're not going to be able to receive the harvest of that word. The, again, the word is being sown all of the time. The, the word isn't the problem. The seed isn't the problem. It's the soil that it's going into. And by taking a real hard look at our lives, and especially over the past decade, or maybe the, your whole lifetime, you can really start to see the areas that you need to work on so that you have the right foundation for entering into 2020. There is still time to do this, like clear your schedules and, um, sorry about the dogs, and uh, <laughs> clear your schedules and get, um, get this right. You know, get this right, because it's, again, it's not just for you, it's generational. It's for your whole family. It's for your kingdom connections, all the people that God is going to put into your life that need what you carry. Um, and so I just really pray that each of you would uh, take this to heart, that you would look in your life and see where your greatest um, disappointments or lacks are so that you can come into um, your Kairos moment, so that you can meet the promises, the blessings that are meant, that are always attached to every crisis. Every problem always has a solution, and it's it's when you are willing to meet those two in the middle. You're the connection. You're the 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 conduit between the natural realm and the spirit realm, and you need to to be in the right place at the right time for that stuff to happen, for that stuff to occur. And it has to do with the process of taking your crisis, facing it allowing it to work in you whatever needs to be worked in you you know for your given situation so that the blessing can come so i pray that this has helped you i pray that this video blesses you again in the description of this video i'm going to have the link to my life after narcissism course and my uh total healing uh private facebook group if you're interested in joining either of those okay so have a great weekend and i'll speak with you guys on live next week